You have a heart situation. Yes, he will. I know he will. Hallelujah. God certainly deserves our praise today because all that we have ever needed, he has provided. God has taken care of us, good care of us, and God deserves praise this day. So can we just give the Lord a great big hand clap of praise? The prophet said, has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting Lord, the God, the creator of the ends of the earth, he fainted not, neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might, he increaseth their strength. Even the youth shall become weary and faint, and the young men shall utterly fall, brother forward. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles, run and not get weary, walk and not faint. Does anybody know anything about waiting on the Lord? Somebody's in a waiting room right now. Who's in a waiting room? Somebody's in a waiting room right now. When we are in the waiting room for Jesus, we can be patient because we know that he is the doctor who has never lost a patient. He is a lawyer who has never lost a case. He can fix whatever you're waiting for him to fix. Somebody just say, fix it, Jesus, fix it. And the choir has already told us, Sister Davis, yes, he will. I know he will. Amen. Amen. If, you, if you're not already standing, would just please stand and turn to the 17th chapter of the book of John. John chapter 17. We certainly thank God for the angel of this house, the overseer, our pastor. Amen. Thank God for how he's continuing to heal and strengthen him. Amen. Thank God for the leadership of this church. We just thank God for the fellowship of believers. Aren't you glad to have a place where you can come and be fed and somebody to come and pray with you? Anybody, anybody happy to be part of a healthy body? Amen. We thank God for that. John chapter 17. Begin reading at verse number 13. Herein lies the reading of God's holy word. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also may be, may be sanctified by the truth. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will come, who will believe in me through their word. Go a little quicker. And they all may be, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one just as we are one. Somebody say one. I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one. And that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am that they may behold my glory which you have given me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. I just want to use for a subject for a few minutes. You're not ready yet. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're not ready yet. I know this is the 8 o'clock crowd. I know this is the, the, the holy crowd, the sanctified crowd, the set-apart crowd, the church crowd. So you, not many of you know about this, but if, if there's anybody here who used to be in the world and when the party was really at the height, when it was live, you would look at your neighbor and say, you ain't ready yet, you ain't ready, you ain't ready, you ain't. I mean, any, anybody remember how we used to say that? You ain't ready, you ain't ready, you ain't ready. Well, I, this is my subject today, and I've kind of been grappling all morning with this uh, uh, because this is not coming from a negative connotation. We see that these are the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Before Jesus went to the, the, 
the cross of Calvary, he took time to pray to the Father. Now, this is not the prayer which we call the model prayer where he said, uh, where he taught his disciples to pray, our Father which art in heaven. This is not that prayer. That model prayer was for us. This prayer, Jesus prayed for himself. Somebody say for himself. And over and over again in John chapter 17, Jesus keeps reminding the Father that we are one. He keeps saying back to the Father, we are one. I am in you and you are in me. And, and I have not lost any that you have given to me. And I want them to be one the way we are one. Somebody say we are one. I, uh, I, one, one year, one year I, I, I got real risky and I, I, I didn't come to church on New Year's Eve one year. Uh, uh, and I went to a maze concert. I mean, because the church is in me, and I decided this, this particular year, Deacon Rito, I just didn't want to come to church. I mean, our church is in me, and, uh, and so I decided to go to a Mays concert. And, and so uh, Brother Mays, Frankie Beverly helped me with something this morning. He helped me to understand what it means to be one. So, you, you do know you can get a message anywhere, right? You can get a message from anybody, from anything. And so I kind of listened to that old theologian himself. I listened to Frankie Beverly. He gave me some words to share with us this morning. I'm sure you don't know the words. So I, I brought the words so I could speak the words to you. Because I just know you don't know these words. You're not going to find these words like this in the Bible. You're not going to find these words just like this in some Bible concordance of some biblical dictionary, Bible dictionary. So I brought these words today because I know you don't know Frankie Beverly words. Frankie Beverly says, I can't understand why we treat each other in this way. Taking up time with the silly, silly games we play. We've got our love and no matter how it's said or done, we are one. No matter what we do, we are one. We love, come on y'all, somebody, the deacon standing out for Maze and Frankie Beverly. We we are one. Love will see us through. We are one, and that's the way. Somebody said that's the way it is. Sometimes I feel that we try and make each other sad. The things we do, how we make each other feel so bad. We've got so much. We could all be having so much fun. We are one from the very start. We are one deep down in your heart. We are one, and that's the way. We are one. Tell your neighbor we are one. Some of y'all look so appalled. It's just like, somebody say we are one. So I can't understand why we treat each other in this way. Taking up time with the silly, silly games we play. We've got our love and no matter how it's said or done, we are. Somebody say we are one. That is what Jesus was saying to his father before he died on Calvary's cross. And Jesus said to his father, Father, help them to become one the way we are one. I love when we look at the life of Jesus, we understand how he expects us to live so that we can experience this same oneness. Somebody say oneness. Because we understand that one, we understand that one is a whole number in and, by, in and of itself, right? We understand that anything that's going to work has to be unified. Anything that's going to have strength has to be unified. Somebody say unified. So we've got to understand what it means to be one, how to become unified so we can experience this total love relationship that Jesus and the Father have so that we can have this relationship one with the other because the truth of the matter is we cannot say we love God and whom we have never seen and we don't love our brother who we see every day. The Bible says you are a liar and the truth is not in you. When you love the Father, you prove your love for the Father by how you love one another. And so Jesus, Jesus shows us in this last prayer that he prayed on earth as he prayed to the Father in chapter 17, the very first verse, he says, Lord, I, I have glorified your name. I have done what you have called me to do. Somebody say glorify your name. Jesus knew his purpose. Somebody say he knew his purpose. Jesus knew his purpose. He said, I came to glorify your name, and I have done that now. I want you to glorify me. I want you to glorify me so that I could give you your glory back. See, if we're going to ever become, become one with one another, we first of all, we've got to become one with self. The reason people have a problem with you is because they have a problem with themselves. 
Y'all don't like that. You don't like that. See, when you are one with you, you will find a way to be one with somebody else. But when you have some schisms in your own mind, when you have some division in your own mind, when you bipolar in your own mind, you will treat everybody else sometimes because there's something wrong with your mind. So Jesus shows us that if we're going to be one, I've got to know who I am. I've got to know my purpose. Listen, Jesus was a carpenter's son. Your purpose is not wrapped up in a title. Your purpose is to glorify your father on earth. I just said this at a conference yesterday. Whether you're giving pedicures or haircuts, whether you're doing nails, whether you're throwing newspaper, whether you're washing cars, hello somebody, whether you're on some five you have in some Fortune 500 a business, doesn't matter what you do, your primary purpose is to glorify God. When you say you're born of God, that you've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior, people have got to be able to look at you and see Jesus in your life. My primary purpose is to glorify the Father. Jesus says, that's the reason I came. That's what John says in chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The Scripture goes on saying, and He came to His own, His own received Him not. But to as many as received Him, to them He gave power to become the sons of God. Bible says He came to manifest God's glory, to show us what the Father looked like. You could quote this all day long, but people are not going to believe what you read. They're going to believe what they see. They're not going to believe what you say, but they will believe what they see. And so Jesus, through his 33 and a half years on earth, he walked a life that was pleasing to the Father because he always knew, always kept at the forefront of his mind that my meat is to do the will of him that sent me. My job on earth is to glorify my Father. Before you clock in on that job, you'll say, Lord, I'm here to glorify you. Before you drop those kids off at summer camp, Lord, I'm to glorify you. Before you, come on, y'all. Somebody say, glorify the Father. Jesus understood his purpose. He said, I did not come to abolish the law. I came to fulfill the law. Jesus said, I came to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus said, I didn't come to serve, but I didn't come to be served, but to serve. Jesus said, I came to give myself as a ransom for many. I'm telling you, you got to know your purpose. Jesus said, I came that you may have life and that you may have life more abundantly. Jesus said, I came to reveal my father Jesus. Jesus says, I came to do the will of my father. Jesus said, I came to bring fire. Jesus said, you think I've come to bring peace? No, I didn't come to bring peace. He says, I come to bring, to, to put father against son. In other words, you're going to choose me or you're going to be against me. And when I show up, it's going to be revealed who you for. Woo. See, some of y'all like me, I'm like a bandwagon. I, you know, you'll never know who, who team I'm on until the end of the quarter. I'm Cleveland all the way. Jesus said, I, 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 I am king, but my king was not of this world. Jesus says, I came to bear witness of the truth. He says, for this I have come into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who is of the Father, who's of the truth, hears my voice. I like that. Jesus says, I came to put away sin. Behold, John says, here comes the Lamb of God, which comes to take away the sins of the world. You've got to know your purpose. Somebody said to glorify the Father. My purpose is to glorify the Father. And when I am one with that, when I am one in that, then I could be one with somebody else because I understand to glorify the Father. He has called me to be a minister of reconciliation. He came so that he could reconcile us back to God. And so while he's up, before he goes back to the Father, he says, now that I'm leaving this world, I'm not praying for the world. I'm not praying for the drug dealers, the crackheads, the pimps, the prostitutes. I'm not praying for the gangbangers. I'm not praying for the Republicans. And I'm not praying for them. I'm not praying for the Democrats. He says, I'm praying for my disciples. I die, I'm going to die for the whole world, but I'm praying for my disciples because they are the ones who are going to be left in 
in this world. Don't you understand when you understand your purpose, your purpose is not just to sit around and wait for the Lord to do something for you, but your purpose is to bring glory to his name. Your purpose is to go out and evangelize the world to make sure the folk in the world come to know who Jesus is by the life you live, by the words that come forth out of your mouth. So, so he has made us ministers of reconciliation. When I see something that's broken, I don't scatter the pieces. I do what I can to mend it, bring it back together again. Woo. Jesus says, because if you're not one, they won't believe who I am. Lord, help me right up and through here. See, the reason it's hard for us to win the world is because we are so divided. The reason it's so hard for us to win our children is because we are so divided. The reason it's so hard for us to bring our communities together is because we're divided. That's the trick of the devil. We don't have to be alike, but we can be unified. Together we stand. Divided we fall. It's a sin and a shame that we have as many divorces in the church as we have in the world. Everybody falls short. Everybody has weaknesses. Everybody has flaws. Everybody has some nasty ways. All of us have fallen from the glory of God. But when we are in Christ Jesus, he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. He will tell me to sit down so that he can stand up. He'll tell me when to shut up so he can speak through me. We say we love God, but we hate our brother. We need to start telling each other, shut up, you a lie. Don't tell me you got a praise for God, but you got a bad word for me. You a lie. Listen, listen, listen. Jesus says, when you're not unified, people won't believe me. Jesus says, so I sanctified myself for you. Ooh, y'all, y'all missed that. Jesus, there are some things I kept myself from because I was thinking about you. He says, the world hated me. They're going to hate you. Hate is not an attribute of a child of God. I know, I know y'all want a car in a house. I'm going to give you something that's going to help you get that car in the house. Hate is not an attribute for the child of God. Our birthmark is love. Not just the folk who love you. Jesus says even the world does that. You get no praise when you love those who love you. But when you love those who hate you. When you pray for those who despitefully use you. When you can go the extra mile for somebody who done sat down on you. God is saying I'm trying to show you what love really is. And when the world can see that in you, then they will be drawn to me. But if you're divided, you're scattering other folk. You're hiding them from being able to see me. I've been saved since I was nine. Been teaching since 12. And I'm just getting this. I'm just getting this. That my life is not about me. Come on, help me, Brother Fontenot. I'm just getting this. That my life is not about me. That sometimes I've got to cry and be okay with it. Sometimes I'm going to be broken and be okay with it. My job, my purpose is to reveal the glory of the Father. I've got to learn how to shout even when I'm sad. I've got to learn how to embrace even when somebody else is refraining from my embrace. Because that's what love is. We are one. Somebody said we are one. So this is what this is why I say we not ready. Somebody said we not ready. Because before Jesus died, which was ultimately to fulfill his, fulfill his purpose, he prayed for himself. That's why I say we ain't ready. How many times do people come to the church and they ask you to pray for them? And I ask, how long have y'all been praying? Well, we want to seek some help first. I hope the lady's in here today because I told her in the office. Uh, she, I've counseled her about four times, Pastor. And then she called me again. She wanted to come in again. And her text said, I want to come in and counsel with you again with, you know, whoever. I'm not going to say all that. She said, uh, 
before I, before I pray and seek some other help. So I thought I misread the message. So I read it again. So she had come to me four times. And I'm almost certain on the first time I told her I can't help her, but we're going to pray about it. I'm sure I said that. But after four times seeking spiritual advice, then you say, I want to know what to do before I pray and seek somebody else. Are, are y'all hearing this? Before you call pastor, before you call the church, before you call whoever you call, you've got to learn how to fall on your knees for yourself. You've got to learn how to seek the Lord for yourself. We are drawing energy out of people. We are sapping folk dry because we have not learned how to go to the Father for ourselves. And that's why our elders were saying, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If you withdraw yourself from me, where shall I go? You've got to fall down on your knees and say it's me it's me it's me oh lord standing in the need of prayer not my brother not my father not my sister not my mother it's me the savior of the world prays to god for himself now if jesus prayed and he the word made flesh windy what makes us think with our saved every other day self? That we could go a day without prayer. The reason we are being prayed upon is because we haven't learned how to pray too. The devil does not care about us coming here singing God's praise. He already know that ain't about nothing. Because he led the choir. And his heart wasn't right. <laughs> Come on, y'all. He's not concerned about us coming together in here. Because just because you're in the church don't mean you're in the church. He knows, he knows there's nothing to your title and your clothes that don't make you sanctified. This long skirt don't make me holy. No more than me sitting in the car will make me a car. Come on now. He says, I'm trying to, he tries to keep us from praying to the Father. He tries to keep us from hearing the word because he knows the truth shall make us free. And that's why the Lord says, I have sanctified them with your truth. Hello, somebody. When we pray, the Lord will reveal to us the truth. When we pray, the Lord will reveal to us his plan. When we pray, the Lord will lift our burden. When we pray, the Lord will show Show us the way when we pray. Somebody say pray. So he prays for himself. And then secondly, Jesus gives a departing prayer for his disciples. Thank you, because I sure don't need that time. He gives a departing prayer for his disciples. Verse 6 he says, First, verse 6, he says, I'm praying that you unify them. Look, in 6, he's not talking about us. In 6, he's talking about the ones who followed him. For three and a half years, these disciples followed him. They ate with him. They saw him perform all, all kinds of miracles. They were with him all the way. And Jesus is praying before he lays down his life for us. He's saying, Lord, I'm praying for the ones who have been up close. Y'all missing this. See, the reason a lot of times we find trouble in the camp is because we're not praying for the ones up close. Sometimes, some, well, y'all do know the, the, uh, the well, I'm, well, the China wall, the, 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 brick, the China wall, one of the wonders of the world, how people go to look at this wall, although it's a great wall. Do you know with all that they did, all the, all the years it took to build that wall, China was still infiltrated. It was not the wall that kept them safe. The guards at the wall started letting somebody talk and get in. Ooh, missed it. it was not some strong, some strong army that came against the wall, brother, 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 Fort Fontenot, that caused China to be invaded, but somebody who was, who was supposed to be watching at the wall. Listen, from somebody, listen to somebody on the outside and let somebody from the outside get in. 
And so then they were hurt from within. Oh, y'all not trying to hear this. The Bible says you got to be careful because we have some who have crept in on the well. And some folk who will get in your ear and tear up your house if you let them. I'm trying to tell you, it doesn't matter how strong it is. You got to pray for the folk up close. You got to pray for your kids. It'll be your kids who cut your throat. You got to pray for your spouse. You got to pray for the pastor. You got to pray for the leader. You got to pray for the government. Pray for the people up close. Because the devil, if he could get the head, he got the body. That's why I'm so glad to see our pastors here today. I'll be doggone if the devil take this body. We got a strong head and we praying for the head. We praying for him up close because so goes the pastor, so goes the body. The anointing falls from the head down to the feet. Somebody said we got to protect the head. No quarterback gets his talented butt out there on the field without a helmet. But even with a helmet, he has some folk who's protecting him. Y'all missed that. But we, with our spiritual sight, with all our scriptures, how many times you pray for your pastor a day? How many times you fast for your pastor and your leaders a day? How many times you send a word of encouragement to your pastor? Pastor, why didn't you tell me to preach that this is the word? You got to pray for the ones up close. Jesus prayed for the disciples. Why? Because when he walks off the scene, these are going to be the ones who turn the world upside down. I'm trying to tell you, about a month ago, the Lord told me you about to get the family back together. There was a time we had Bible study in our family at least once a month. But we, we eat together. We have day nights. We go to Schlitterbone. We eat pizza together. But we, we pray every time we come together. But we haven't had Bible study together. And the Lord convicted me about a month ago and says, you can do everything else with them. Why don't you lead them in prayer? Why don't you lead them in Bible study? These are going to be the ones who are going to carry on the name. These are the ones that... Coming up in your foot, footstep, so you got to protect those up close. Pray for yourself, then pray for the ones up close. You don't protect your legacy just because you have money in the bank. Your money in the bank will cause it to be divided if you don't put the right stuff in them. I ain't telling you what I heard, I'm telling you what I know. Duh. Can I say this right here? I'm, 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 I'm almost done. I was real happy on my way to church, but. But uh, on the way here, my mother called, and she's my mother's a strong woman in every sense of the word. Strongest woman I know. She wasn't no missionary. She ain't no preacher. She ain't go to church as often as I did, Rito. But she practiced the principles in front of us. And she told us what was right. But my mother called me. She said, Mimi, she said, baby, you on your way to church? I said, yes, ma'am. What's wrong? She said, nothing. I said, I can tell in your voice, mama, something's wrong. She said, nothing. And I said, mama, something is wrong. She said, well, and she just started to cry. She said, June came to me in a dream. It's the first time he's ever come to me. June is my mother's oldest brother. They talked on the phone every day. They would fight like cats and dogs. I didn't even understand their relationship. But every day they talked on the phone at 10 o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock at night. They talked on the phone every day. December, my uncle was battling with cancer for two years. I was there with him with my mother. She's going back for cancer treatment, all of that, for two years. But he never got sick until the day before Christmas, Nicarito. And the day before Christmas, he went into the hospital. He was really, really sick. And my mother brought him home. We, 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 we were taking care of him at home. And my bro on New Year's Eve, we were at home together. We prayed together. And my uncle would say some stuff to us. When he went in the hospital, the, 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 the last time we had to take him back, he, uh, my, my uncle never acknowledged that I was a preacher. All he would say is, don't let that girl pray because she prayed too long. <laughs> None of y'all say. But, uh, but he was on his dying bed. And he, he said, Mimi, is that the noon class heard this before. The youngest probably heard this before. before. He says, is there anything you want to tell me? I said, no, sir, uncle. He said, you sure? I said, no, sir, uncle. He said, something I want to tell you. I said, what is it, uncle? He said, he said, I saw a big, tall building. And I saw the angel called me up on this big, tall building and told me to look back. So when I look back, I can see the world, and the world is a dark place. He said, it's, it's trouble everywhere. He said, things are going to be different. And I said, well, Uncle, you're not afraid. Oh, you don't be afraid. He said, no, things are not going to be different for me. They're going to be different for you. He said, but no matter what you do, keep running with the truth. My uncle didn't know that I was thinking about getting a job outside the church. 
I never talked to him about that. He said, but whatever you do, when you get the truth, you just keep running with the truth. I'm trying to tell you, before he took his last breath, he left some, work, some instructions. Then my sister came in the room, and he said, he said, we got a good family. And he started naming everybody in my family who had died. He, saw, he said, we got a good family. And he said, I see we all there. They all there. I'm going where they are. They all there. He said, my sister said, yeah, you see so-and-so, so-and-so. I said, yeah. He said, we have a good family. He said, we're not a perfect family. He said, we got, some, we, we, we got some trouble in our family. He said, but whatever you do, stick together. Stay together. Come on out. We got some, we got some Lazarus in our family, but he said, stay together. We got some drug ass in our family, but he said, stay together. We got some selfish folk in our family, but before my uncle died, he said, whatever you do, stay together. My uncle was a Vietnam vet. My uncle did everything for my mother, everything. And I would say, you know, I ain't trying to compete with you, uncle. You'd have bought her a car, a deep freezer, wash and dry. You got it now. I'm just going to give her cards. But he, all he said, we, we gathered around the bed. He's holding our hands, my mother. And he said, he said, I've never done this before. He said, I've never done, talking about dying. He said, I've never done this before. He said, all I want y'all to do is hold my hand. So we took times around the clock to make sure the whole while he was in the hospital, somebody was there holding his hand. There were times he couldn't talk. Times the pain was so great. He said, I've never done this before. All I want you to do is hold my hand. My mother was so broken. Pastor Wright, and she would stay there all day, hours and hours. and so tired. My mama have her own health issues. We said, Mama, you got to go. We'll be here. She said, no, but he told me to be here. I said, but Mama, you got to go. Well, this one day, we finally convinced her to go. He said, he said Brenda, all I want you to do is get some rest. You're going to rest tomorrow. That's what he told my mama. He said, you're going to rest tomorrow. So she left. And when she left, when she left, my uncle went into, I don't even know what it was because all his, his, his oxygen level was always 99. 98, never, never, even with the morph in his body, was, his, his breathing was always strong. He was always strong. So about 5.30 that morning, I'm the only one there, and I told him, don't leave me here by myself, because I don't know what to do. Don't leave me here by myself. <laughs> but my sister left by 4 that morning, so I think it's okay, because mama, she's going to go pick mama up. By 5.30, 5.30, the nurse came in to try to give him some more morphine. She said, oh, she said, he's still here. I just kind of gave her a look, and she said, she said, it's amazing he's been strong the whole while he's here. I said, yeah, he's strong. She said, well, I'm not even going to bother him and give him anything because he's so strong. I said, that's fine. So she left out. So I, I, I dozed back off to sleep, but my mother walked in the room. First time she had a good night's sleep was the night before because he told her, sister, you're going to rest tomorrow. So she came in the room. She said, brother, I'm here. And as soon as she said that, my uncle's heart rate went down to a uh, uh, Blood pressure went down to 40. I don't know how to read those monitors and stuff. Went down to 48, 46, 45. And my mom looked, and so the, so the monitors started going off. And so my mom said, Mimi, what's going on? What's going on? The nurse ran there. What's going on? I said, Mom, you already know. June already told us he was ready. You already know. She said, but Mimi, Mimi. I said, but Mama, you told him you're going to be okay. So when my mother got frantic, his heart rate started going back up. The blood pressure started going back up, 95, 96, 90. When he heard a voice, he was saying it's okay for me to die. But when she got frantic, it went back up. Y'all missing this. She said, brother, I'm here. So it started going down. He dying, he dying, he dying. They run in. She frantic, she frantic. I say, mama, you promised you you're going to be okay. And when she said that, she said, that's okay, brother. You go ahead. You go ahead, brother. And before I knew it, it was, he was gone. I'm trying to say gone. I'm trying to tell you, he didn't die. The Lord just took his last breath away. He was already prepared, but all he wanted us to know is I'm ready for this. You just stay together. I don't care what it takes. You just stay together. You stay unified. So when he died on January the 9th, my mother has been having a hard time. Took on the cruise, so she kind of get having a hard time. And I can't tell her don't grieve. That's her brother. And she would, she said, well, me, sometimes she would call. I don't understand. I said, Mama, it's okay. It's okay. But when this morning she called, she said, Mimi, she said, when she didn't want to tell me, I said, what is it, Mama? She said, June came to me last night. She said he was, he was in the room with his friend. And they say, we're getting ready to take June. 
And she said, I said, wait a minute, brother, where you going? Where you going? He said, well, Brenda, I'm leaving. She said, he walked out the door. He said, Brenda, I'm leaving. She said, well, Br she said she was holding his hands out. She don't, don't go. He said, well, Brenda, I want to go. He said, but Brenda, I'm okay. I want to go. That's what he came to her in the dream to tell her. What am I trying to say to you? Before Jesus died, what he said is, I want to go. I've done what I'm supposed to do. Now what I'm telling you is what I've done on earth now is your job to do. If you say you love me, love your brother, love your sister. Treat your husband right. Treat your wife right. Treat your parents right. You're not ready yet. Death is the hardest thing for us to grasp. But death is very much a part of life. The word of God says, except the kernel of wheat fall into the ground and dies, it dies alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. What does that mean to us in the spiritual? Our relationships will never live if we don't die. Everybody can't have their way. What's more important, my way or the unity of this relationship? Sometimes I got to compromise what I want because the unity of this relationship means more than me getting my way. This, 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 this self-aggrandizement preaching we hear on TV, we read in books, this self, self-help, self-help. Got us thinking we great, we wonderful. None of us are good. Bible says none is righteous. No, not one. And if the Lord can forgive us of our sin and our wrongdoing, how can we not extend that same kind of mercy and grace to somebody else? I don't care how many times they have heard you. The Lord says forgive them 70 times, 7 a day. No, not 490. We have a complete and a perfect heart to always forgive. I have given you the ministry of reconciliation. Get it right. You're not ready yet. And we wonder why the Lord's not elevating us. He can't trust you on a low level yet. And some folk on a high level, he's going to bring down. You're not ready yet. Living for Jesus is just that, living for him. Jesus says, Father, we are one. Teach them how to be one. That was the point of Jesus' life that he did not want to die, Pastor. He said, Father, I would, I wish, I want, I desire for this bitter cup to pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Aren't you glad he made the ultimate sacrifice? And if you say you love God, he expects you to make the ultimate sacrifice. Not take your life naturally, but in the spiritual realm, keep crucifying, keep mortifying the deeds of the flesh. Stop thinking those old same thoughts, thinking it's about you, I, I, me, me, my, my. It's not about you. It's not about you. It's about what can I do to keep this marriage together? What can I do to keep this ministry together? What can I do to keep this job, my unit together, my department together, my house together, my community together? What can I do? Just remember what amazing Frankie Beverly said. Stop playing these silly, silly games. We are one. That's the way it is. Aren't you glad the Lord created us to be one? The word of God says, in Christ there is no Jew, nor Greek, male, nor female, bond, nor free. He came to give us liberty to set us free from every track, every, every trick, every trap of the enemy. To, to break us out of every box so that we can live freely. Love freely. Do what the Lord has called us to do freely. And if you have freely received it, freely give to others what the Heavenly Father freely gives to you. That's the word of the Lord today. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise.